big political figures and commentators are making the point about it, which is that it would be wrong for him to come back. There is still the Outstanding Privileges Committee. There are a whole host of issues as to why Boris can come back. We are trying to get... If those who are supporting him are expecting a different result, they're not going to get it. And I think we've got to be absolutely clear right now. The scale of the global economic crisis that is being faced by so many countries around the world needs people who have got the grasp economically to deal with the situation to be able to ensure that we can get through this tough period. And to me, it's absolutely clear that Rishi Sunak is the only candidate available to be able to do this and to get us through and to unite the party, as you asked earlier. OK, well, we shall see tomorrow. Anting, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. OK, well, as I was saying there, Boris Johnson has now landed on that BA flight back from the Dominican Republic, just touched down at Gatwick Airport. Let's bring in Ali Fortescue. Ali, he's back in the country, but do we think he will be back in politics? I mean, it, I think a few days ago this seemed quite far-fetched, but, you know, he, he, there's his plane, he's back in the country, allies close to him have told us that he is up for it, he wants another go at the top job. I think the big question, well, there's two questions. One, will he meet the threshold of 100 MPs? And that is no guarantee whatsoever. I think, you know, people think he will get to 60, but beyond that will be more challenging. But if there is momentum behind him, could we see some people rowing in behind the former prime minister? Um, uh, if that looks like that's the, wind, the way the wind is blowing, could he just get over 100 MPs? What is clear is that Rishi Sunak is at the moment the firm favourite with MPs. It looks like he has made it onto the ballot, his part, his um, his campaign saying that he has more than 100 um, votes. Of course, Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson, I think it's fair to say there's no love lost between these two. Rishi Sunak is seen by many as a person that took down Boris Johnson when he resigned in office, triggering, of course, Sajid Javid also resigned, triggering a wave of resignations that eventually toppled Boris Johnson's government. Um, there has been some talk in some of the papers that we could see a Johnson-Sunak alliance, the two men coming together, former rivals, to bring the party together. But I've had a few conversations with people close to both of those men, and it from the conversations I've had, you cannot see either of them serving in the other one's cabinet. Um, as I say, you know, I haven't spoken to everyone. We don't, we don't know what is going to happen. Politics has been incredibly unpredictable, but it is, I think, hard for many to see these two men working together. Let's not forget Penny Mordaunt. She, her name has also been in the mix. She is. Um, got, I think, 19 people backing her at the moment, but there are some who worry that she does not have the momentum behind her at the moment and she might not make it onto that final ballot. So will this be, I think, either a coronation for Rishi Sunak on Monday, who is the favourite at the moment, the firm favourite among MPs, or will Boris Johnson or Penny Mordaunt make it onto onto that final ballot. And we know that Boris Johnson does very well with a membership. I certainly sensed that over the summer when I was at the hustings. There was anger from some towards Rishi Sunak for what they perceived to be um, him stabbing Boris Johnson in the back. But will what has happened over the course of the last six weeks, Liz Truss's premiership, many Rishi Sunak backers feel vindicated by what has happened in the last couple of months. Will that change um, members' minds? As I say, we don't know what is going to happen. We don't know if Boris Johnson's even standing. Um, people close to him have told, have told some of us that it looks like he will want to go for the job. We don't know if he he has always been someone that has never failed to surprise us all. We don't know if he wants to be the next Prime Minister, if he is even going to put his name forward. I think he will want to know that he can win this if he's going to enter the race. Of course, Rishi Sunak hasn't entered himself either. So we're in a pretty extraordinary position right now where Penny Mordaunt, the only person to officially enter the race, she has, I think, 19 votes last time I checked. Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson are the front runners. Rishi Sunak by far the front runner when it comes to MPs backing him. But neither of those two men have actually put their names in the hat yet. So who will be the next prime minister? We don't know. We will know either on Monday next week um, and certainly by Friday next week. Yeah. Two days, two days. Um, Ali, I just want to, to 
talk about something you mentioned there and how this is playing out, first of all with the MPs and then with the members of the Tory party. I was talking to Antti Emmanuel, um, he's a Conservative MP, he's backing Rishi Sunak, and I brought up the fact that a lot of people do indeed think that Rishi Sunak stabbed Boris Johnson in the back by resigning, and he retorted and said, absolutely not. And that is, of course, what you would expect from uh, Rishi's supporters, and a lot of them say that. But how do the MPs feel about it, and how do members of the party feel about what happened and how Boris Johnson left office? I think there is a great strength of feeling on both sides when it comes to Boris Johnson. I think there are people who think the idea of him coming back, I find that quite upsetting, some MPs I've spoken to. Um, you know, there's a couple, uh, Roger Gale, others, um, who have suggested they would leave the parliamentary party if Boris Johnson comes back. Um, there are those that adamantly, I mean, Nadine Dorries is probably the best characterisation of this, but we know he's got the backing of some big names, including Jacob Rees-Mogg, Ben Wallace suggested he would potentially back Boris Johnson. So Boris Johnson, I think, elicits strong feelings on both sides. But in a sense, the same can be said to an extent, I think, for Rishi Sunak. There were certainly first time around people that didn't want to see him be prime minister, and there are still those that don't. Um, but I have to say, some of those views seem to have softened. I was talking to one um, minister who didn't want Rishi Sunak to be prime minister uh, first time round, but has decided that what has happened in the last few weeks with the economy, he is a man that can steady this. So I think there are those who have softened their approach, having not wanted Rishi Sunak to be prime minister. Um, and I think you see that reflected in the numbers. Um, so I think, but I do think, you know, these. There is no clear unity candidate here. Penny Mordaunt's team might say that she is the unity candidate, but I, I don't think there is anyone that is clearly going to bridge um, the divide, and that is going to be the enormous challenge for whoever becomes the next Prime Minister. OK, Ali, um, just, to, just to let you know what you're looking at, that's a British Airways flight that has just touched down in Gatwick Airport. It came from Punta Cana International Airport in the Dominican Republic. It is carrying Boris Johnson... Um, and he is back in the UK. I just want to go, uh, Ali, back to you and ask just a final question. This issue of the Privileges Committee process, just talk us through that and what could happen. Because if he does become leader, he still could lose his, lose his seat through, through the process, couldn't he? Yes. So this is the... Privileges Committee, they are looking at whether Boris Johnson misled Parliament um, over parties, which, of course, was one of the big... Um, one of the big things that brought down the former Prime Minister, what was going on in Downing Street during lockdown. The Privileges Committee are looking at that. That means that over the next few weeks um, or months, they'll be taking evidence, and that is something that um, people like Dominic Raab, who is Deputy Prime Minister under Boris Johnson, think will be, as he put it this morning, incredibly distracting and not what you want from the man, the man who's going to be Prime Minister. And as you say, could potentially uh, mean that he has to stand down. So it is, it, it is a pretty extraordinary situation to be in. I think, you know, his backers will say that he didn't do anything wrong, he'll clear his name. Um, but... Dominic Raab, Deputy Prime Minister under Boris Johnson this morning, saying that that would be a huge distraction. Um, he said he thinks Boris Johnson could return to frontline politics, but he, this is not the time for him to be Prime Minister. Um, and that is certainly what Rishi Sunak backers will say today. OK, Ali, thank you so much. Uh, just to tell you again, Boris Johnson has arrived back in the UK. That's his BO flight, just touched down at Gatwick Airport from the Dominican Republic. Um, um, we're waiting to see what happens as the next two days play out and indeed see if he declares his candidacy. But we will come back to that as and when. And Ali, we will come back to you. Thank you so much.